Always and help her. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, amen. Deacon Turner. Amen. Sister Turner, Mother Gillum. Amen. Thank God for all the praise. Amen. Seniors. Amen. Thank God for you all. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing like coming into the house of God and enjoying worship with the saints. Oh, yes. The saints of God, I tell you that this is where you draw your strength in. Amen. Because sometimes you feel like giving up, but when you come in the house of God, it just renew you all over again. Well, that's how it do me a lot of times. So I can speak for myself. Amen. When the saints of God begin to praise God and worship God, amen. We thank God. Amen. For his goodness and his mercy. Amen. For a true endure through all generations. Amen. Amen. Sister Raven got the throat with what a bell bottom did. She told me she was getting a bell bottom. Amen. Amen. It's good to miss with each other sometimes. Yes. Let each other know that. Amen. You're the saints' mind. We're praying for you. Yes. Amen. Thank God for Brother Red. Amen. Building yes. drums and keyboard. Yes. Amen. God put something in your heart to be a blessing to him. We want him to stay in the house of God and don't be swallowed up in these streets. Yes. Amen. So I stay in his ear a lot of times and tell him to stay out of trouble. Yes. Pastor, I want to have to come and see you. Amen. Amen. Numbers chapter 14, verse 39 through 45. I think you had enough time to get there. <laughs> Amen. My wife told me, she said, you give us time to get there. <laughs> Amen. So that's why I did it that way this morning. <laughs> let me just call the scripture first and give you time to get there. And let me go ahead and go through the formalities and we'll be ready to go. <laughs> Amen. Verse 39 of Numbers chapter 14. And the Moses told these sin unto all the children of Israel. And the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we will go up unto the place where the Lord had promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you that you be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the, unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them and discomfited them until Hamar. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor don't go up, don't go up without, God. without God. Come on, say, neighbor, neighbor don't go up, don't go up without, God. without God. One time with all your screens, say, neighbor, neighbor, don't you go up, don't you go up without God. Without God. Amen. Saints of God, because anything, the promises of God that we walk in, saints of God, you have to understand that we need God. Oh, yeah. Don't never try to go into the promises of God and the plans of God without God. Oh, yeah. Now, saints of God, I want you to understand that all of us need God. And I know that some people think that they don't need God, but the Bible says in Him we live and move and have our being. Oh, yeah. Then, saints of God, we need the Almighty. Then we could even got out of bed this morning had not God given us strength, oh, saints of God. Yeah. Some people couldn't win the work of God when it gave you the intelligence. When you can go in and clock in. Do you hear me, saints of God? I know we deal with a generation that say, well, ain't nobody did nothing for me, and, and I am God, and, and I don't need nobody. You know, but in, in God, we live and move. We live and move in God, and we have our being. We exist because of God. And saints of God, if God didn't give you the brain to go to work and clock in, you wouldn't know how to drive, to drive yourself to work. Because we have to understand that we need the Almighty. Oh, yeah. Don't never think that you don't need God when he holds your very breath in his hand. Oh, yeah. That if God was to close his hand, you will stop breathing and jump in the floor and start kicking around and screaming. Oh, yeah. Do you have to God? But we, we, we thumb our nose up towards God. And we got a generation who thumb our nose up towards the Almighty, not understanding that we really do need him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Saints of God, I come to the realization that I need God. 
and better yet, I don't want to go on without God. Oh, yeah. Everything that I do from this point of time in my life, I want God to be part of it. Oh, yeah. I want God to be leading me and guiding me, saints of God. I don't want to make no decisions on my own and try to make through life by myself, but I want to make sure that I'm following the lead of the Lord. Oh, yeah. And saints of God, that needs to be our testimony that I want God to lead me. I don't want to lead myself. And anything that I get, I want God to release it to me. Oh, yeah. Any blessing that I receive, I want God to give it to me. I don't want to. I don't want to go out and attain a blessing without God. Because if you attain a blessing without God, you might get the blessing, but you end up losing your soul in the end. Oh, yeah. What do a prophet a man if he gained the whole world but lose his soul in hell? Yeah. And saints of God, we got to understand that we need God. Oh, yeah. We cannot go up without God, and sometimes it saints to God, we forget about God, and we begin to make decisions without God. Oh, yeah. And even when God has given us a promise, we try to walk in a promise without God. But we cannot walk in the plans of God, in the purpose of God, in the promise of God, without God. Oh, yes. And saints to God, the children of Israel are here in Numbers chapter 14, amen, they had to learn this the hard way. Now you remember, saints of God, last Sunday, they got so far, but God told them to turn around and go right back. Right back. And why did God tell them to turn around and go back? Well, because of their doubt. They doubted God and said, listen, we can't go over here and take the land. It's, it's giants in the land, and the land eat up its inhabitants, and, and God ain't strong enough to bring us into the promised land. Yeah. They said God is not strong enough to bring us into the very thing that he promised. Wow. When they saw all the plagues in Egypt, when they saw God parted the Red Sea, when they saw God turn bitter water sweet. When they saw God bring water outside of the rock. When they saw God send them manna in the morning and manna in the evening. Yes. When they saw God send them quail in the camp. When they didn't have any meat to eat. When they when they clothes didn't wear out. And they sailors didn't wear out, saints of God. That God was showing them that I am your sustainer. Oh, yes. When they went against the Amalekites, how God defeated the Amalekites. God was still assuring them that I'm with you. But they got right there at the brink of the promised land. Yes. They got right there at the foot of the promised land and doubted God. And God said, turn around and go right back into the woods. Yes. Saints of God, let me tell you something. When God told Moses, I want you to tell them. Since you spoke all this doubt in my ear, and you said I brought you and your children out into the wilderness to kill y'all, and you said that I'm not able to chase the inhabitants out of the promised land, God said, since y'all doubted me, those ten men brought up a bad report to the children of Israel and got the whole nation to cry and murmuring and complain. Oh, yeah. And God says, since y'all said I don't got the power to take y'all in, turn around and go back in the wilderness. He said, listen, you ain't going to go in, but your children is going to go into the promised land. Yes. He said, but y'all go back into the wilderness, and he said, y'all going to be out there for 40 years. Oh, until all this generation that doubted me, die off. Oh, and he said, your children that you say that's going to be a prey, he said, I'm going to bring them into the promised land. Yes. So the prophet came back down from the mountain. He said, thus says the Lord, all y'all turn around and go back to the wilderness. You hear me say, God, and here in Numbers chapter 14, yes, verse 39, Moses said to the people, look at that verse 39, of Israel, they did what? Right. They mourned greatly. They got the crying. They got the weeping. God told us to turn around and go back into the wilderness, and we ran here at the brink of the promised land. We can see the promised land for what we're standing in. Yes. And you mean to tell me God wants us to turn around and go back? The prophet said, listen, God said, turn around and go back. Okay. Saints of God, the Lord does nothing unless, first of all, he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God never do anything in the church or in the earth realm unless, first of all, he sent a prophet to you. Yes. Saints of God, the prophet will tell you when it's time to go in. And also the prophet will tell you, God said, no, you miss your season. You hear me, saints of God? Yes. The prophet said, go in. They said, no. The prophet came back and said, God said, well, turn around and go back. Okay. But when he heard this, they got the weeping and they got the crying. Yeah. And look what they did in verse 40. They did what? And they rose early in the morning. Early in the morning, did what? And went up to the top of the mountain. Saying what? Saying, here we are. Uh-huh. And we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised. Somebody said, wrong season and wrong time. Wrong season. God had already told y'all to go in at first, but you disobeyed him. Now God said, turn around and go back into the wilderness. Saints of God, they got up early in the morning. Uh -huh. After God had struck those ten spies who went and brought back an evil report. Uh -huh. Now they got up the next morning. They said, we'll do it. Uh -huh. But it was too late. Too late. 
That was out of season. Saints of God, sometimes we're trying to walk into the things of God, but we out of season. And we out of timing. You got to be like the sons of Issachar. You got to understand the seasons and the time in God. You got to be sensitive in the spirit. When God says time to go in, you got to be ready to go in. When God tells you no hold your peace, you got to be ready to hold your peace. But they got to burn it in the morning. Early in the morning. Red up the mountain. And said we are ready to go in. But I heard in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the first verse. He said, for everything there is a season and there is a time. Yeah. Season means a appointed time. Saints of God, some promises that God has for you is for a appointed time. Yeah. And sometimes we are screaming and scratching and kicking in the flow. And God, how come you haven't brought it? But saints of God, you got to understand that some promises of God is for a appointed time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can't get it until that appointed time comes. You can't get it until the time comes that God says it's going to be released. Yes. Season is a appointed time. appointed time. It's a fixed time by God. They got to their appointed time. There was their appointed time to go into the promised land. Yes. But they missed their season. They missed their appointed time. Do you hear the saints of God? Yes. Saints of God, don't miss your season. Yes. Now I want you to understand, saints of God, that seasons are cycles. Uh -huh. We have spring. We have summer. Uh -huh. We have fall. And we have winter. See, your season comes in cycles. And saints of God, you can't miss your season and you can't miss your cycle. When God says, I'm getting ready to restore you, don't you miss your season. Yes. When God says, I'm getting ready to bring you higher, don't you miss your season. Because you got to make sure you understand that seasons come in cycles. Yes, Lord. My God. Right now it's summertime. Let me use some revelation. Okay. It's summertime. Some people say the reason why I call when it's winter, they say the earth is far back from the earth, Come is on. what they say. And they said when it's summer, that means the earth is closer to the summer. But it's not true, because the earth spins around uh -huh. and it's tilting. Yeah. We think that the earth sits straight up, but it's tilting. Yeah. And when it's spinning, the northern hemisphere, which is America and, and, and part of the top part of Africa and, and, and Russia and China. And, and, and so that's the northern hemisphere. And when the earth is tilted in a certain position, the sun is shining on the northern hemisphere. This is the reason why we have summer at that time. But if you go down to the southern hemisphere, which is Australia and, 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 and Antarctica, and when you get the lower part of South America, and when you get lower parts of Africa, that is the southern hemisphere. Why is it cold there at that time? Because the sun is not shining on the southern hemisphere like it's shining on the northern hemisphere. But the reason why we have summer right now is the earth is in a certain position towards the sun that the sun is shining right on it. And saints of God, whenever there's going to be a new season in the earth realm, you will know it's going to be a new season because the temperature change. Do you hear the saints of God? We hear the saints of God this morning and say, this is my season. But saints of God, you have to understand, in order for you to get a new season, you got to move just like the earth into a new position. I told you that when the earth is in a new position, the sun is shining on it, you get spring, you get summer. But when it moves to another position, you get fall and you get winter. Saints of God, if you want a new season, just like the earth got to change its position to get a new season, you got to change your position to walk in your new season. You hear me, Saints of God? Some of us want a new season. But we won't change our position. God said change your position and I'm able to cause you to walk into a new season. We heard the woman of God this morning said when you repent then, God is going to hear from heaven. Yeah. Then God is going to heal the land. God is going to restore you. God is going to revive you. Why? Because now you're in a different position. Yeah. At first you was in a position that you was outside of God's will. But when you repent, you get yourself in another position. Yeah. And when you get yourself in another position, you can get a new season. Do you hear me say, God? We got to change our position. Yes. Your position of unforgiveness towards that mother or that father. Yes. Your unforgiveness towards that uncle or that auntie. Or that cousin that hurt you. They've been in your position all your life. Jesus. And you say, I never forgive them. I go to my grave. I will never forgive them. Guess what? Okay. And this is because you've been stuck in the same position. Come on now. And you have not seen a new season. 
You go, why? Because God cannot bring a new season until you get in a new position. Yes, That's not the way that God works. Now the song sounds good. Uh -huh. This is my season for grace, for favor. Uh -huh. This is my season to reap what I have sown. But if you've been sowing off forgiveness, guess what? This is not your season. Yeah, yeah. You've got to know how to position yourself yes, and get ready for God to bring a new season in your life. Yes, Say some of us have been in the same season for around about 20 years. You ain't came out that season yet because you refuse to reposition yourself. You in a position of disobedience right now towards God, and you said, this is my new season. No, it ain't. This ain't no new season. You're going to stay in the same season you've been in for the last 20 years until you change your position. Seasons are cycles. Work with me now. Seasons are cycles. They're cycles. You see, some of us, we in, in the spirit, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. See, when it gets springtime, everything is growing. See, all of us love to be in our springtime while we serve God. Because in our springtime, everything is growing. When you go outside and look for the springtime, you see flowers growing and leaves growing back on the trees. Wow, that's the springtime. See, thanks to God, sometimes we're in our springtime where everything is growing around us. All the saints love the springtime because everything is sprouting up. The ministry is growing. The business is growing. Relationship with the children is growing. Yeah. The marriage is growing. That's your springtime. But then you have your summertime. In the summertime, the summer just maintained what grew in the spring. Uh -huh. That's when you and your season of things being maintained. Well, God will begin to maintain what he gave yeah. you. Then you have the season of fall. When things begin to fall off the tree. Fall off. Yeah. That's a season when scripting begins. Come on now. This is the time when God began to script stuff out your life that shouldn't be there. So a lot of us like the fall season. Yeah. Because God began to make stuff fall out of our spirit. That's like about not like him. Yeah. God is trying to position you to get ready to go into another season. And say something about God is scripting some stuff away. Yeah. When we came to God, we was in our fall season, we thought we would die. Because God was plucking off leaves and God was moving stuff. Listen, you and your you and your beginning of your stripping stage. Yes, yes, Lord. Some people can't handle it because they say, I'm losing everything around me. My God. I'm losing friends, but God is stripping. I'm losing loved ones who care about me, but God is stripping. Because God is trying to show you that you don't need them, you need me. Yes. God said, Don't look to them. God said, Look to me. You and your stripping season. Your winter season. Speaking about season now, yes. you have to know what season that you are in. Yes, Lord. Winter time is a time when everything has been scrimped. Yes. You see the trees in the winter time, nothing but branches, no leaves. Mm -hmm. The grass been stripped of their greenery. Do you hear me say yes. to God? Yes. That's what God got you stripped all the way down. Do you hear me say to God? Yes. But what God is doing, he God is trying to position you to get ready for your spring to come back. Do you hear me say to God? When God strips certain things around you, he's getting you in a position that you can get ready for another season. And when your springtime comes, then restoration comes. Revival yes. comes. Do you hear me say to God? Who yes. to know what season we in? Yes, you can't stay in the same position and think you're going to get another season. Change to God, when the season change, we know it because the atmosphere change. The atmosphere change. I said something changes when a season change. Yes. How can you say I, I'm in a new season and you have not changed? Come on. Because if it's a new season, you should have changed. Yes. Come on, saints to God. Yes. We're saying that I'm in my new season, but I'm still cussing people out. Oh, I still got no forgiveness towards Uncle Billy. Oh, I can't stand my mama or my daddy. Oh, Come on, saints to God. It sounds good when the choir sing it. But it takes the pastor to get up and give you understanding. Yeah. I know the prophet said get ready for your new season. Come on now. The prophet will point the way. Mm -hmm. Because the prophet is the point finger. Yeah. You got the apostle, which is the thumb finger, uh -huh. which is the government office. You got the prophet, which is the point finger, because every time a prophet get up, he or she is always pointing. God says, get that out of your life. Yeah. And you need to stop doing it and stop doing it. But then you got the evangelist, which is the finger that reach out the longest, which is the middle finger. He is the recruit office. Yeah. He recruit people to the house of God. But then you got the pastor. Mm -hmm. The prophet say, go this way. 
And the Bible said that the pastor is the shepherd. Uh -huh. He feeds the sheep and tend to the sheep. Yes. He stay in the house of God. The prophet said go this way, but the pastor is a shepherd. He leads the sheep. Yes. The prophet said go this way, they're going to promise. The pastor turned around and said come this way, they're going to promise. But y'all got to follow me before you get to your promise. Oh, you need a pastor to give us yes. I don't know what the prophet say or what the evangelist say. Yes. We need a shepherd to lead you to green pastures. Oh, yes. in the same season for 20 years. I'm helping some of y'all. How come I've been down in the season of oppression for so many years? How come I've been down in the season of anger and bitterness and rage? And it seemed like I, I just got so much rage and, and I got so much jealousy in my heart. Baby, you've been in a long season for so many years. You should have been seeing it that, it's, that I'm in a new season, but you're still in an old season. Why? Because ain't nobody told you that before you can walk in your new season, you got to reposition yourself. It's a season and time. Mm -hmm. Time and season are two different things. Seasons are cycles. But the time is the fixed time that's within the season. Yeah. Now let me show you some saints of God. And let me help some of you prophets. Because every prophet needs a pastor. Be with the saints of God. If not, people will kill you and call you a false prophet because they don't understand the way that the prophetic word. Uh -huh. We was at another building. Oh my God. This was year four lads. We got here in November of last year. Mm -hmm. The year before that, God told me in my spirit and my wife, it's y'all season to move. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I told my wife that year, I said, I really feel in my heart that God's going to move us. Mm -hmm. I said, I feel that very strongly. Guess what? We didn't move that year. Come on. I said, God, what's going on? I know you put it in our heart that we were moving. We didn't move until the next year and that was in November. Listen, saints of God, we was in our season, but we wasn't in the time yet. Come on now. Somebody said, next spring, I'm going to bring you a new car. This is, I'm going to bring you a new car when spring come. Mm -hmm. But they didn't tell you the time because every, every season have three months in it. Come on now. Okay, when are you going to bring the car? Is it going to be in, in April, May, or June? You got to find out the time and it's going to happen within the season. Be yeah. here saints of God, you can be in your season. And if it don't happen right then, you don't think you miss God. No, you haven't missed God. You're in your season, but you got to wait for the right timing. Yeah. And our right timing was in November. Do you hear me say, God? Yes, sir. We was in our season a year before it came. So some prophet will say, uh, uh, some prophet will get up and say, man of God, thus says the Lord. Come on now. This is your season to move to another building. And, and instead of them waiting to hear from God, they'll say, this year, this thing is coming to pass. It's not a bill of prophet. They knew it was your season, but they didn't get the timing right. You got the season, but tell me the timing within the season so I can know what to do. You need to say to God, seasons are cycles of time. But you got to know the timing. Oh, my God. He said there's a season and there's a time for everything. Saints of God, they got up, they went up the mountain, but it wasn't their season and it wasn't their timing. And when you do something that's not your season and it's not your timing, saints of God, you're going to fail. Yes. Because I told you it's a party time. Yes. It's a time appointed to you by God. Now is the time for you to get the education. You can't wait till next year. God said, go right now. That's the time. That's your season. That's your timing. What is your season? You need me and woman God to tell you this your season, this your time, go ahead and go in. But when you get to the border of the promised land, uh -huh. don't stop. Don't stop you got to tell yourself, I cannot let fear and doubt make me turn around because this is my season. Come on. And if I don't go in now, I will miss God. Yeah. You got to God. You got to get tenacious. Sir. You got to tell people around. You got to tell your family, say, no, we will not back up because this is our season and this is our time. And we got to get ready to roll in. We got to take it out for to walk in the season. Oh, yes. They ran up the mountain the wrong season the wrong and the wrong timing. The wrong time. 
And they said we can do it on our own timing uh -huh. and we don't have to be concerned about God's timing. No saints of God. You can't do it in your timing. You got to do it in God's timing. When God tell you to bless somebody, you better bless them right then. Yes. If God said give to that person, you better give right then. Because if you miss your timing, some things can come up in your life, saints of God. You say, God, what's going on? Come on. And God said, you remember I told you to give to such and such and you didn't do it for whatever reason you had. God said, now you reaping the harvest of that. Yeah. Now you can't make me as me because God said, when I told you to sow, I was trying to set you up for what's, what's going to come down the road so you can be blessed. On, but God man. said, you disobeyed me and miss your season and miss your timing. And God said, that's why you in the room that you're in now. My God. Because we tell God who we want to give to and not what you want to give. But when God said, do something, you better obey God. Yes, Lord. They went up to the mountain. Wrong season, wrong timing. wrong timing. They didn't reposition themselves. They were still doubting God and disobeying God. Come on, saints of God. We need leaders that's going to teach us. We can't keep on singing this a new season and we don't even know what we're talking about. We're not going to walk in a new season until you reposition yourself. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. If the earth got to position itself to go into a new season, Come on. who are we, saints of God? It's the way that God has things set up. You got to position yourself. They went to the top of the mountain. What did Moses say to them here in verse 41? And Moses said, Now why do you transgress the command of the Lord? Uh-huh. For this will not succeed. Moses said, What did I just tell y'all? Yes. They got up early in the morning and said, No, we're going to go up and we're going to take the land. Moses said, Now why y'all going to disobey God? He said, what you're doing is not going to prosper. Yes. Saints of God, when we disobey the timing of God, and we disobey the word of God, whatever we put our hands to, guess what? It's not going to prosper. He said, listen, don't disobey the commandment of God. He said, God said, turn around and go back. God didn't tell you to go forward. He said, don't disobey the commandment of God. He said, it will not prosper. Oh, yes. Which means you ain't going to be able to break out. Prosper means to break out. Come on. When you prosper, that means to break out. Yeah. And since God got to help you today, because a lot of us cannot break out of certain strongholds because we're disobeying God, and when the season and time come for us to break out of it, we turn around and go a different direction. My God. Let me show you something. The waters of trouble on the altar. Yes. God, you got to speak to that man of God. He don't live in your house. He don't know what's going on. He speak about what's going on in your house. God said, listen, tell them to get that right. The man of God said, listen, I'm not trying to judge on to tell you what God told me. God said, you need to stop doing it. You need to put that down. Guess what? Instead of us obeying God, we're going right back to it. You just miss your seeds and ready to be delivered at that time. And then you come back to the house of God, and you come to the altar and get prayer, and don't nothing happen. You know why? Because God said, I told you last Sunday to get down to the altar. I told you that. So you got to understand seasons and times in God. You can't come when you want to come. Yeah. And I can go home and, and I don't have to go up there for prayer. I'm going to go home and pray. Guess what? How come you still around? You know why? Because God told you to come at that time. I told you that it's seasons in time. You got to come right then when the power of God is flowing. Don't miss your season and don't miss your time. He said, if you disobey the word of God, you will not break out. Yes, 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 Lord. I'm trying to break out chains of lust, yes. anger, addictions. And you're trying to break out in chains of fear. And unforgiveness. And God told you last time you came to forgive them, but you wouldn't do it. My you God. kept it in your heart, but there was your time for God to break you out. And now you're trying to break out on your own. And you're trying to break addiction on your own. And you're trying to break unforgiveness on your own. And you're trying to break jealousy on your own. My but now it seems like the chain just won't break. No matter how much you stretch, the chains will not break. You know why? Because you keep on missing the season and time of God. Say, so God, we don't free ourselves. It's the Spirit of God that free us. Yes. And when the Spirit of God is speaking to us at that time, we cannot miss our time and our season in order to be delivered. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. I come when I want to come. I do it when I want to do it. I stop, I get ready to stop. No, you will not. You'll keep on doing it because you're missing the season and time when God spoke to you. He said, this thing will not prosper. He said, you're not going to be able to break out. You're not going to be able to break through. Yes, you hear it, yes. say, God. We got to move in the timing of God. But when we disobey God, we miss our timing and our season. Yes. We can't break out. We can't push forward. How come we can't push forward in the things of God? Because you may have missed our timing and our season. And I know you got people telling you all God to do it any time. No, when God tells you you need to be here, you need to be there right there at that time. You can miss your season. You yeah. When God said forgive them, go ahead and forgive them. Come on, say God. So you don't have to now. When God said, I want you to put that thing down, you got to put it down. Why? So you don't 
be bound. When God speaking, we got to move at that time, saints of God. He said, this ain't going to prosper. The prophet said, if you go without God, it ain't going to work. Who the pastor think he is? I'm grown. And, and I do what I want to do. And he said, God said, don't go up. But God ain't told him that. See, you question your leader. But you didn't question your leader when he prayed for you and you got healed. You didn't question your leader when he gave you that word. When you know that it was God, you know it wasn't no way he prayed for God. You didn't question your leader then. But now when the leader said, God said, don't do something. Now I need to question, is he really a man of God? Come on, says God. When you got healed, you was dancing, you were shouting, and that's my pastor. And when he gave you the word, that's my pastor. But now he tell you turn around and go back. Oh, I got a problem with him. I'm grown and real, but ain't gonna tell me nothing what to do. <laughs> and real ain't trying to tell you what to do. I didn't tell you what the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you. And as you go without God, you will not prosper. He said, Why did you disobey the command of the Lord? He should not prosper. Look at verse 42. What did he say? Do not go up. He said, Don't go up. Lest you be defeated by Hold up. He said, Do not go up. Mm -hmm. He said, This is not the time for you to go up. I told you it's a time and season for to obtain the promises of God. Yes. He said, You miss your time and your season. Don't y'all go over there. Yes. He said, Oh, people gonna chase y'all from over there. He said, Don't go up. Yes. We got to know when to go and when to sit still. Yes. I hear the singer say, so you got to know when to hold them, when to fold them. <laughs> but you got to know that they God. Do you hear me say it's God? You got to know what God is telling you to go, and you got to know what God is telling you, hold your peace. Oh. He said, don't go up without God. Yeah. That's what I told you when we first opened, say it's God. Don't go up without God. Don't do things without God. Yeah. Don't try to walk in the plans and purpose of God without God. Don't you try to deal with that man without God? Me and my wife were driving this morning. I, this man and woman, we almost ran in the back of them because they arguing. Put them aside and they started just arguing with each other. He said, they the arguing, man arguing, and the woman arguing. I told my wife, I said, now a woman have a right to have her opinion. I said, but sometimes, women, you guys ought to be quiet. You said, around that man up the more you talk. Do you hear the same God? <laughs> you need to listen to God, I said, be quiet. Let him talk after a while, he'll get tired of talking. Yeah. Do you hear the saints of God? But we don't understand our timing. Yeah. We got to deal with it right now. I'm going to deal with this. God is there telling you, I want you to hold your peace. Yeah. You got to know where to go and you got to know where to stand in your place. Come on, saints of God. Yeah. He said, don't go to this house. He said, you're going to be defeated before your enemies if you go. He said, don't you go without God. Yeah. Say, God, don't try to do the things of God without God. Don't try to go through life without God. Yes. He said, listen, he said, go not up. Mm -hmm. For what? Do not go up lest you be defeated by your enemies. He said, go not up for the Lord mm -hmm. is not among you. Not among you. Then you be not smitten before you enemies. He said, God, I ain't even with y'all if y'all go up. Mm -hmm. He said, don't go up because the presence of God is not with you. Say, so now you got to understand, not by my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God said, if you go up, you're going to need my spirit. You're going to need my power. You're going to need my word. You're going to need my wisdom. Yeah. He said, don't go up because God ain't with you. God's God is not with you. He said, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites are before you, and you should fall by the sword. Because what? You have turned away from the Lord. Therefore, what? The Lord will not be with you. Saints of God, he said, y'all turn back from God. You mean to tell me we got here in the weirdness and the glory cloud is over us and we're going to turn back from God? You mean to tell me that we got the word of God and God have ran down manna from heaven and we're going to turn away from God? Uh -huh. The prophet said, y'all turned away from God. Well, some people said, no, prophet, you ain't doing it online. You can't judge my heart. He said, no, God said, y'all turn back from following him. How do you know you're going to turn back from following God? When God said, "Word to the promise name, you wouldn't do it. You're not following God anymore. Uh -huh. Saints of God, how do you know that, that you have turned back from following God? When, you got, when God is not leading the way anymore. When God is not leading the way, guess what? You have turned back from following God. Yes. He said, listen, you've turned back from following God. And a lot of us say, now we're going to be true. We have turned back from following God. Oh, yes, we have. Mm -hmm. If God can't tell you what to do no more, you're going to turn back from following God, baby. It's simple as that. Yes. Let me tell you something. Leaders, we cannot shoot cold the word anymore. Yes. 
We, we, we can't tell you what you want to what you want to hear for you to feel good. Baby, you done turn back from following the Lord. Oh, yes, you have. If you done turn back from following his word, guess what? You done turn back from following the Lord. Yes. If God can't direct you and God can't tell you what to do, and you tell God I'm grown and I do what I want to do, guess what? You done turn back from following the Lord. I don't care how much you sing, how much you shout, how much you dance around the church. Come on, say God. You have turned back from following the Lord. We get religious in the house of God. This is my season for grace and for favor. And we sing all these songs, but in our heart, we have turned back from following the Lord. God can't tell us what to do anymore. The Spirit of God don't even speak to us because we have drowned them out. We have quenched the Spirit of God. God. And when a pastor is speaking, it don't mean anything to us. You know why? Because we have turned from following the Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Let me have some, 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 some of these leaders. If the glory of God is in that house and the word of God is in that house, the people going to obey God. No, they won't. No, they won't. They was right out there in the wind. They saw the glory cloud. Yes, the Lord. pillar of cloud by day. The cloud turned to fire at night. They had Moses in the, in the window of the prophet. They had manna. They had quail. They had Aaron, the high priest. Yes. They had the word of God. And they still disobeyed God. <laughs> they turned back from following God right there in the wilderness. Right there at the brink of a promised yeah. land, they turned their backs to God. And saints of God, we got to be truthful. Have we turned our backs on God? Oh my God. You say, how do I know I turn my back on God, man of God, when you're not following him anymore? Mm. Jesus said, take up your cross follow and follow me. me. Yes, Lord. You can't follow him if you don't have a cross. Jesus. Because you need something to put your flesh on. Hey. It's a lot of things that pastor us want to do in the flesh, but I don't do it because I'm following him. Yeah. Do you hear me say to God? Yeah, 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 See, yeah. sometimes I talk to my wife sometimes about, about things, and I say, some people are so selfish. But God told me, God said, you look at things in one way. Because God said, you can be selfish also. My God. And when you give up your purpose and your destiny, and if, if I give up everything God is telling me to do and go into the world, I'm being selfish. You know why? Because God called me to feed you the word of God. Yeah. And if I say I don't care nothing about everybody God told me to feed and I go into the streets, God says that's being selfish. You know why? Because you're thinking about yourself. Come on, say God. Some of us, we just think about ourselves. We don't think about souls. We don't think about people that's going to perish because they see us living wrong. We don't think about people who are living away from God based on stuff that we say yeah. and based on stuff that we do. You know why? Because we are turned that back for following the Lord. My God. Jesus. My God. If God is calling you and you're constantly walking and you won't turn back, you're going to turn back for following the Lord. Jesus. Come to a close. We have no prayer life. Jesus. We, 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 we don't study his word. My God. We don't even come into the house of God. There's no hunger in our heart for God anymore. Some of us, God had warned us a long time ago that the enemy was going to get ready to take us over. Yes, he told you through your shepherds. Yes. He told you through your pastor. I told you, but you still didn't listen to God. Mm. And now it's hard for you to come back to him. We can come to the altar, but have we turned our hearts back to God? Oh, because we have turned back from following him. Whenever God said, stop doing that, and we keep doing it. God sent, sent some out again. God said, stop doing that. And we keep on, you know why? Because we have turned our heart away from following God. Moses said, you have turned your heart yes. from following God. Since God know we don't want to hear that. I don't know we don't want to hear that we have turned our heart away from God. But if God can't tell you what to do, you turn your heart from following God. My God. He said, why do you call me Lord and you won't even do what I say? Come on, saints of God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, don't say that you love me and you don't even do what my words yeah. say. Come on, say to God. And we get angry. You don't know my heart. No, God know your heart. Yeah. Come on, say to God. I love the Lord. No, you don't. Love is just not an emotion to God. Love is an action. When you love God, you do what God says. Yeah. Come on, say to God. He said, but you have turned. Yeah. Watch the people you're around. Because yes, Lord. some people will pull you away from God. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, say to God. The Bible said that Ahab's wife Jezebel stirred him up that he wouldn't even obey God. Sometimes your friends will pull you and make you turn your back on God and you'll start following your friends. Oh he said you done turned your back on the Lord. Oh my God. He said therefore the Lord is not with you. Yes. But look at verse 44. They did what? But they presumed to, but they presumed to go up. Mm -hmm. Presume means 
heedless, which means they didn't heed nothing Moses said. Mm -hmm. Pursue means to, to inflate, it means to blow off, it means to be prideful. Mm -hmm. When a prophet said, don't go up because God's not among you and you have turned your back, they said, we ain't listening to Moses, Moses ain't doing them a lie. And they went straight up the mountain. Heedless, which means we don't listen to nothing that God say. How do you know that you have turned your back on God when you don't listen to nothing that God say? Oh my God, we can come into the house of God and the preacher can preach it and get blue in the face, but our mind is already made up. We can go right back and do what we did before we came into the house of God. You know why? Because we don't give God no heed. God don't mean anything to us. His voice don't mean anything to us. The Bible said they presumed to go up, which means they looked at Moses and said, We not heed nothing that you say. We got self confidence that we can do this. We outside of God's season and we outside of God's timing, but we still for the people promise. You're not gonna get the promise when you're outside of God's season and you're outside of His timing and you don't turn your back on follow the Lord. Oh yes. God, begin to put it on my heart. Cause I used to pray, say God, don't let them enjoy anything until they come back to you. That's what I used to pray. And God said, Well, love and kindness have I drawn them, son. He said, sometimes I will still give them the job, the house, the car. God said, I still give it to them because I'm trying to get them to come back. I'm showing them love and kindness. Yes. But it's a dangerous thing for God to keep on giving you things. You know you're disobeying him. You know that you're in rebellion. And God is still to cover you. Come on, saints of God. That's his mercy. The Bible says God is long-suffering, not forever suffering. Yes. Come on, saints of God. You know grace can run out. Because if you die, your sin, grace is over. Yes. Come on, saints of God. But they presume heedless. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the pastor say. I don't care what the prophet say. I don't care what the mouthpiece say. I'm going to go up. I'm going to do it alone. Yes. God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Yes. When you're proud, God will resist you. Resist means God will make his rage against you. Uh -huh. God will see you coming up the road, and God will back all the way back. And God will allow the enemy to put pitfalls in front of you. Come on, say to God. Yes. Because God resists the proud, but he'll give grace to you if you're humble. Yes. They presume to go up the mountain. Uh -huh. But what do the Bible say? Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant, neither the Ark of the Covenant, nor Moses, of the Lord, nor Moses. Left the camp. Departed from the camp. Look at this. They went up, but guess what? The Ark of the Covenant didn't go up. What was the Ark of the Covenant? It was the, 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 the Ark that the priest put on their shoulders. It was made like a box. It had two cherubims on the top of it with their wings covering the mercy seat. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant, you had the Ten Commandments, which represented the Word of God. Yes. They tried to go up and take the Promised Land, but the Bible said that the Ark of the Covenant didn't move, which means that the Word of God didn't even go with them. Sometimes we try to obtain a promise, but we ain't even taking the Word of God. Yes. We looked inside of the Ark of the Covenant, it had a pot of manna. God told them to put a pot of manna inside of the Ark of the Covenant, which represents my provision. Yes. provision. Saints of God, don't try to get the promise of God and you don't go with God's provision. You're going to need God's provision in order for you to go into your promise. Do you hear saints of God? Inside of the ark of the covenant was Aaron's rod. Yes, Lord. Remember, the people came up against Aaron. Yes. They said, Aaron ain't no high priest. But God said, get 12 rods. Mm -hmm. Put them out there outside by the tent of me. He said, if you wake up in the morning, the rod, he got almonds on it. He said, that's the man that I chose to be the high priest. Yes. They woke up the next morning and Aaron's rod had blood all on it. God said, that's the man I put in place. Uh -huh. He said, put that rod in the Ark of the Covenant to remind the children of Israel about authority. God said, when I put a man among you, God said, I'm giving him the authority. Don't try to go into your promise without the authority yes. of God. Moses didn't even leave outside the camp. They were trying to go into their promise without a leader. And a lot of us are trying to go into our promise without a leader. Yes. The Ark of the Covenant did move. Mm -hmm. The Ark represented God's presence. Yes. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, they represented God's presence. They went up, but they went up without God's presence. Yes. Says God, some of us try to obtain a promise, and we try to walk in the things of God, but we try to do it without God's presence. The Bible said that the Ark of the Covenant did move. move. I told the Ark of the Covenant, you had two cherubims, yes. and a wings stretched out over the mercy seat. The mercy seat was the lid. Then when you open it, you will see the Ten Commandments, you will see Aaron's rod, and you will see the pot of manna. Mm -hmm. the, the high priest will go in and put blood on the mercy seat yes. on the Day of Atonement once a year. So God can forgive the people's sin for a whole year. 
The mercy seat is the place that the high priest went so that God's people and himself can get mercy. Yes. Saints of God, when the ark of the covenant didn't leave out of the camp, guess what? That means that God's mercy wasn't going with them. And saints of God, when you get ready to walk into your promise and walk in your weather place, make sure that you take the mercies of God. All saints of God, you're going to need his mercy yes. along the way. You might not need his mercy right now, but you're going to need his mercy down the road. Yes. They went and out the ark of the covenant. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mercy seat. But mercy was still in the count. Yes, and they left away from the count, and mercy was in the count. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, sometimes we leave away from the house of God, and we leave away from God's mercy. Be you and say, God, the pillar of cloud that was over their head. The Bible said there was a pillar of cloud over their head by day mm -hmm. to lead the way. And at nighttime, it turned into fire inside the cloud to give them light at night. Yes. They went over into the promised land, but they went without the glory cloud, which means they had no direction. I told you that the pillar of cloud by day gave them direction which way to go. Whenever they saw the cloud raise up over their tabernacle and start moving, there was a sign to get up and pack up and start moving. That was their direction. Yes. But when they went into the promised land, the cloud was still standing in the same place, uh -huh. which means they had no direction. I told you at night, it turned to a pillar of fire to give them light so they can see out there in the wilderness. They went up without God's direction, and they went up without God's light. Yes. Which means they went up without God's illumination. Yes. And say to God, don't try to walk into the things of God. Don't go walk into the things of God without God because you need his direction and you need his light. Yes, yes, Lord. I need light. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my pathway. If I don't got his word, guess what? I don't got no light. If I don't got his word, I'm walking in darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you walk in darkness, you don't know where you're going. You're soon to stumble because you're walking in darkness. But when I got God's word, I got his light. Yeah. You hear me say, yeah. God? They went up without his light. Uh -huh. Moses and Aaron stayed in the camp. Uh -huh. The prophet stayed in the camp. Which means that the prophetic was not moving in their life. Prophetic means to foretell and foretell. Which means foretell, I tell you what's going to happen up the road as the prophet. Then foretell, which means to tell forth the word of God. They had no prophet to foretell them the word of God or tell them what was going to happen up the road. Yes. Aaron, the great high priest, I mean the high priest, didn't get up and go with them. The high priest was still in the camp. Mm, yes. A priest is a mediator. Uh -huh. He's somebody who stretched out before God on your behalf. Yes. A priest is somebody who's standing in between. Yes. Which means when God want to bring judgment, he said between you and God, they said, God, have mercy on your people. But, but Aaron didn't go out the camp. The high priest was still in the camp. Yes. You got no prophetic word. You got no intercessor with you. But you're going into the promised land you say, But you're going to fail. My God. Because you're going up without God's presence, without his word, yeah, yeah, without yeah, his yeah, authority, yeah. without his provision without the prophetic, without the prophet, and you're going up without a mediator, an intercessor, somebody to pray for you. Yes. Do you hear me say to God? Oh, I don't need no, I don't need no pastor. You ain't doing nothing but I Do you hear me say to God? Yes. Listen, he told Peter, he said, shepherd a flock of God, which is among you. God said, I would get no pastors after my own heart. Who will feed them with knowledge? How you gonna be fed knowledge if you don't have a pastor? Do you hear me say to God? We got some rebellious people. Go into my promise without a pastor, without the word of God, without the presence of God, without the authority of God, without the provision of God. I don't need no prophet. I don't need no intercessor. I don't need nobody praying for me. I pray for myself. I do what I want to do. I'm saved just like they say. They put their pants on the same way that I put my pants on. See, see, you having a conversation with the devil is speaking to you. You know why? Because he want to pull you away from yeah. your pastor. Why do you want a pastor watch out for your soul? Yeah. All this says to God, sometimes you're going to get angry at me. It's all right, though. I got to tell you the truth. Huh? Because I watch out for your soul. The hired shepherd see the wolf coming and won't even say nothing. You know why? Because he's just getting paid. Hey. And if I say something, y'all might get mad. Y'all may stop paying me. That's the hired shepherd. But a true shepherd said, here come the wolf. Here come the enemy. Here come the witch. Here come the warlock. Be here to say, God, the shepherd is going to warn you. But they went up without a shepherd. Oh, my God. And Moses didn't even leave out the camp. They ain't got no leader. And what do we say in verse 45? Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in the mountain came down and attacked them. 
and drove them back as far as Harma. They went up and guess what? The Amalekites came down. Do this sound familiar about the Amalekites? Yeah. The same, the first people they had war with when they came out of Egypt. Yes. Who came behind them and, and struck down those who were sick and feeble. Here go the same people again. They had whooped the Amalekites at first. Mm -hmm. But now they in a place of disobedience to a God and guess who the first person they see? Hey. They're the Amalekite. Amalekite. Using the sense God. Because sometimes when we get addicted to the enemy and then we serve with God and we turn back from following God, guess what? That same spirit come back again. Come back again. Oh, you got victory over there, and now you outside of that, that shack in the relationship, and then you turn your back on God, guess who come back again? That seducing spirit comes back again. And wrap you up in chains and drag you right back all over again. You know why? Because we have turned our back from following God. We go on without his word. We don't want to honor his authority. We don't want to honor his provision. Yeah. The presence of God is not there. We don't want to honor God in leadership. Guess what? The Amalekites came down and started killing them. They, they hit the wrong back to Hormor. Do you hear the saints of God? Because that's the first enemy you're going to see. When you come out your bondage is the Amalekite. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to go into your promised land, you're going to run up on the Amalekite again. Yeah. The Amalekite said, we got them this time. They whooped us last time. They said, but this time, we got them. Yeah. They thought they were strong, but they didn't know the reason why they was able to whoop them was because they disobeyed God. Oh, no. Sometimes, since God, the only reason why come you defeated is because you disobeyed God. If you just want to obey God, God will give you the victory. When you want to say the time is in the season of God, God will give you the victory. Yes, Lord. Oh, Chase them back to horror. Ma, mm -hmm. takes them back into the camp. Yes, Horma means a curious thing. Mm -hmm. It means to be, be devoted to destruction. Because when you disobey God's word, you put yourself in a position to be devoted to destruction. Come on, saints of God. Yes. What do a prophet of man if he gain the whole world but lose his soul in hell? Saints of God, you can get all the money, you can get all the cars, you can get all the houses. Let me tell you something, the rich man that was in hell, let me tell you something, he just wanted a drop of water. Yes. When he was on earth, he had all the water he wanted to drink. But when he got there, he was just a drop of screams. He just wanted a drop of water. And saints of God, the word of God to you today is, don't go up without God. And I know there's some decisions that you're trying to make. Yes, Lord. You say I do things on my own. But saints of God, don't go up without God. Yes. Don't go up without his presence and his word, his authority, his provision, his leadership. Don't go up without his direction and his light, his illumination. You need God to lead you, saints of God. Mm. Don't tell yourself that you don't need God because you need him. You need his strength, saints of God. Yes, Lord. I told you I don't want anything without God. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for the way that God raised it, me and my wife up. Yes, yes. I want you to know that we come from nothing. Yes, Lord. Some people are so arrogant and prideful. Yes, Lord. When God blessed them, they try to act like we already had it. Yes. We already been here, but we come from nothing. But you hear me, saints of God. I want you to know what God brought us from. Yes. I want to give God all the glory. All the glory. Every suit that God give me, every pair of shoes, every time I eat food, any car that God give me, I want to let you know it's the Lord's doing it's and it's marvelous in our eyes. Marvelous Be human, eyes. Says God. Yes, I'm Lord. not trying to do anything without God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't receive anything without God. Yes, Lord. I need Him. I need Him. Thank you, Jesus. The saints of God, some of us will turn back from following God so what I hear you need to return we heard the one of God this morning saying that when we repent restoration will come yes that God will send a former rain and a latter rain God will wash away your sins and